So all I've done is I've just used a palette knife. So just one of these um, with the masking fluid. So if you've not seen that before, it's just this blue masking fluid I've used um, as opposed to the white one, just so it shows up on the white paper. And all I did was just dunk this into the masking fluid and just kind of liberally do that with it. Um, nothing more technical than that. It was just kind of flicked on and I've left it to dry. Some of these spots down here are just about dry. They're not quite dry yet. If it is, um, just a couple of very quick little exercises just to get our um, get us back in the swing of moving the paint around. And also to think about how we're going to try and control, say, some of the edges and also keep some of the, the paint nice and loose rather than it all being very, very um, tight and controlled because we want to try and get some movement into this bird. We don't want it to be totally stationary. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, take a brush. And I'm going to take some water and I think we might have done this exercise before, but we're going to do it um, in a slightly different way. Obviously, for the benefit of anybody that's new. And the first thing I want you to do is just to draw a shape with the water, leaving a white, uh, a dry space in the middle. So I'm just going to do almost like a wing shape. So it's going to kind of come up, go up like that, and then it's going to come back down, leaving a nice dry space in the middle. OK, of this um, this watered edge. OK, and I'll just curl it out the bottom there. So it goes up, down, and then I've got a dry space in the middle. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some um, some paint on my paintbrush and I'm going to do what's called a dry brush technique. So the colour I'm going to use will be, it doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to use some brown for this exercise. So I'm putting the paint onto my, onto my paintbrush, but then I'm actually going to take some tissue. So I've got paint on my paintbrush and I'm just going to knock off an amount of paint onto um, the kitchen roll so that it's not too, um, too wet. Okay, I'm just going to test that on a separate piece of paper. So it drags like that and you get some um, broken, broken marks. That's really what we're after. So then what I'm going to do is starting up where it's, so it's, it's dry here where I've made my shape and it's wet on the outside. So coming from the tip of that, I'm going to come down and then out. Ooh, not got enough paint in there, let's go a bit more paint. Knocked a bit too much off. So down and then in. So you get that sort of soft top and then you'll get a dry, bottom shape. Okay, so here is where it's breaking where the, the paint is, is dry. And on the edges, the paint is obviously going into the wet paint. And we're getting a very soft, a very soft edge. So I just come round there. And then round. Does that make sense? So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. So you get a dry center. And then you get a very soft, um, wet outside edge. So that's kind of exercise one, if you want to have a go at that one. The second exercise is going to be um, where we <coughs> have a positive shape with paint. Let me just do that quickly. So I'm going to take a slightly smaller brush just with the same color, the brown again, it doesn't really matter what color you use. And this time I'm gonna do this onto dry paper. So this is all dry over here, there's no water, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a shape again, let's just do a circle, just for ease of understanding. So just a positive shape of a circle. I'm just gonna fill the whole thing in. There we go, all around, fill it all in. Now, if I let that dry, then this edge around here is gonna stay very, very sharp, okay? And in some places we might want that sharpness, but in other places, say on the bird, when we come to paint the bird, you might want it to be a bit softer. So how can we do, do that? So what I'm doing is I'm taking my water, okay? So I dunk my brush 
into the water. So now that's totally loaded. If I go anywhere on there with this water brush now, it's just going to cauliflower the whole edge. So what I do is I knock out a large percentage of that water. So it's just a damp brush. It's not a wet brush, it's a damp brush. So there's not much excess water in there. So if I squeeze it, it's pretty much almost dry, but there's a little bit of moisture still in there. And what I can do now is I can run that brush around this edge, probably too dry now. Let me just put a little bit more moisture in there. So I can run the brush around the edge and start to get it to soften off. There we go. So that it's not such a solid shape. All the way around. And then you'll end up with this soft furry ball rather than a very sharp, solid mass. <clears throat> and obviously if you want it to be a bit more defined, you just keep, blend well not blending, but you kind of enable the color to mix on that edge. And then you end up with a very soft, soft circle as opposed to a very hard circle, which we started off with. So let me just hold that a little bit closer so you can see it. So this is now a nice soft circle. And this edge, obviously, where we wet the edge, it was nice and soft. And then we had the, the broken bit in the middle, just with some water. So this is just using clean water on a clean brush. Amazing. And I'm just going to go up. I'm not going to wet the eye. So the eye is going to stay dry. I'm just going round the eye. So just the shape of that green area is really what I'm looking at. <clears throat> so just a bit of moisture in that shape. If you go outside the area, it doesn't matter too much because we're using fairly light colors here, but just try and try as best you can to keep it pretty much within, the, within, that, within that space. So let's just block that off. Don't want too much moisture in there. Okay, then we'll take some color. So as I said, I'm going to use kind of um, um, a green and a bit of yellow in it. So you can use Viridian or you could use Thalo Blue, you could use... Turquoise. Um, turquoise, yeah, you could use turquoise with a bit of yellow in it. Any kind of turquoise colour really. So here we go then. So let's start off... That might be a bit strong, let's put a bit more water in there. Not too strong. So I'm going to start off on this top corner of his head <clears throat> and obviously because it's watercolour where we put water the paint will go, where we didn't put water the paint won't go. So as you can see it's not going into the eye. So we'll just let that bleed down the head a bit, down his neck <clears throat> and then we'll just let that sort itself out. Okay, now we've got a bit of we've got a bit of a, a lighter passage kind of through the top part of his head. So I'm just going to blot off. So I'm drying off my brush, and I'm just going to lift out a percentage of that colour that comes down its neck, like so, a bit like an eraser. I'm going to do that again. Just going to blot the brush off. Just drop it, um, wash it off in the water, blot it off. And then again, I'm just going to lift a little bit of that out, coming down its neck. That's probably enough. Let's just tidy up this edge. Okay, so there we go, we've got a head. <clears throat> now, coming down into its body, same little trick. Going to leave a little band of white, and I'm just going to re wet this next area, which kind of comes down its chest. Now it's quite important to leave this band of white because if we don't and we bring the water right up to that edge, what you'll get is that green creeping down into this brown area, which is fine if you want that, but if you want to kind of control it, you don't want to let those two wet areas meet and then you'll be able to control the paint a bit easier. Just going to tidy that up a little bit. There we go. <clears throat> okay, now brown. So purplish brown I think. I'm going to take some kind of like a burnt umber 
Yeah, so it's a or, a or a raw umber, something of that nature. And then I'm going to warm it up slightly with a bit of a touch of purple. So it's a bit a bit more of a colourful brown rather than being too dead. Okay, more brown. And then we'll take this colour and then we'll just do the same thing as we did with the head. So now we're going to drop it in from the top. Let it come round to the wing. Might tilt it a bit more just to get the paint moving a bit quicker. There we go. So we're filling a band all the way through the middle. <clears throat> Coming down. A bit more paint. Just to the edge of the neck. There we go. Now, we've got one thing we just need to be careful of. So we're going to go and do a little bit of what we did with that exercise right at the beginning. So I'm going to take my damp brush because what I don't want is a very, very hard crisp edge where this brown meets obviously these greys that we're going to bring in shortly. So I'm just going to take my brush, got water in it, just knock out a bit of the moisture and then I'm just going to run it along that edge just to soften off and we can even pull this colour all the way down the body if we want to, because this is all going to be dark eventually. So I'm just going to keep moving that colour all the way down its leg. I'm going to go over the orange because that's going to be a bit, we want to keep that cleaner. Just let it disappear down into there. And let's just soften all this away. So this is almost like, um, disappearing the edge really where you're just using water to evaporate the, the paint to nothing okay and then I might do a little bit of that on this edge as well because that's a bit too crisp to let those two meet <clears throat> a tiny bit and then also around the breast area we'll just bring a little bit of moisture just to get the paint to creep out a tiny bit. Now this might even get lost as the background gets painted, but it's just, just to break up the edge really more than anything. So it's not so solid. There we go, all the way around, down the body, just to keep it nice and soft. Okay. So then coming into this underside of the bird here, I'm going to start to bring some orangey colours. So I'm just going to add, now if I put a load of water, so this is where it gets some, um, um, you have to be a little bit careful about where you put the moisture. So if you remember, we've just wet all of this area and we've brought the paint all the way down the underside of the bird. Now if I go and start to liberally put lots of water on here, along the edge of the bird and say along here because the board is tilted towards me all that water is going to creep down into this area and it's just going to cauliflower that whole thing out so what can we do well one way we can we can tackle that is we can actually tilt the board away from us so that gravity is actually making the water go that way as opposed to making it go this way okay so even though we've got a wet area here by adding moisture now above that wet area, the water's only gonna go that way. It won't come towards us. So that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm actually just putting some clean water back onto the body of the bird. <clears throat> just be a little bit careful on, on this side, because obviously you don't wanna go right up to that edge. We can just meld those colors together afterwards. Because again, if you put the water right on that edge, it's going to cauliflower. So just leave a little dry spot and then we can always fill that in afterwards. So we'll bring this water all the way down past its leg. Won't go into the tail because that's white. And then we'll come up to the wing. Kind of comes over and then back on itself. Okay, so just the main core of its body is really where we're wetting. Now I'm going to take some burnt sienna, which is a orangey brown. 
or if you don't have burnt sienna, you can just use um, um, any kind of warm color. So you could use even a little bit of red if you wanted to. And you see how that now is creeping, creeping up and away rather than coming down, down the bird. So because we just put all that moisture on there, the paint is just creeping nicely into the body. And we'll just let that do its thing for the moment. Might even put a little bit of that nice warm brown on this edge where the paint is still hopefully wet enough to take it. Now, one thing I didn't mention, which is when you're going back into an area of paint like this, for example, this is not so bad, but like here, one rule that you need to try and remember is to actually use thicker paint than the paint you had on there originally. So if the paint was quite runny when you put it on here, which it was because we already wet the paper, the next bit of paint that you put into it needs to be slightly thicker, otherwise it will just cauliflower again. So then let's continue this along. So actually we can even get the leg in actually now because the leg is actually going to be quite orange. So I might even just wash a bit of colour in for that. I'm not going to paint the leg leg properly, I'm just going to let it um, kind of just disappear. So I'm just going to blot off my brush and just let it evaporate into nothing. So there's a little bit of colour there, but not enough to kind of warrant worrying about. And then we'll also do the same with, uh, no, we'll leave that leg for the minute because that's going to be dark. So we'll leave that on for the moment. Right, I need to get some greys on here now. So a bit of grey colour. So to make a grey, I'm just going to take my brown and I'm going to put a little bit of ultramarine into it. So it's the burnt sienna and ultramarine together. <clears throat> Which is giving me a Sorry, warm. Sorry, did you just repeat those colours, Stuart? Yep, so burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. It's giving me a warm, a warm grey brown. Okay, let's go with that. So then I'm going to then again with the board tilted away from me so that it runs away from these colours. I'm actually going to bring these colours now just above what I've put on and start to get them to um, develop this gray area of his body. So I don't have any fear of these colors running into these ones while the board is tilted downwards. If I tilt the board then back towards me, I will get some um, uh, problems with, with cauliflower and that kind of thing. And if cauliflower, you know, that, that can sometimes be a nice technique if used properly, but in this instance, we're trying to control the paint. So I'm just gonna fill all this area in because this is all gonna be dark eventually. And we might as well fill in that as well. Okay. Just soften off the edge. And then a little bit more of this grey colour, I think, just to come a touch higher. So it kind of comes up towards the wing. In actual fact, we cauliflowered that edge because I've gone too close to it, but never mind, it's quite a nice technique. Mm -hmm. it, it's actually um, created quite a nice from there. Effect, but that's all right, we don't mind that. And this is the thing with watercolour is you kind of have to just Go roll ahead. with what you get. You can't really play with it. If I went in there now and tried to play with that and yeah. and fiddle, it's just going to make it worse. So it's, you might as well just leave it, let it dry. And sometimes once it's dried, it sorts itself out. So um, you're better off just leaving it alone, let it do its thing, and then because these colours are still quite light as well, 
the added benefit is that we can always darken up or I could even paint over some of that if I wanted to later on. So you don't need to worry too much. I'm just gonna soften off these edges a little bit. Okay, I'm just gonna re-wet. Um, by the way, this is all nice and dry now. So if you're doing this section, then um, do dry off the, um, the bit that we've just worked on before you start to do this, just because we're going to go into some slightly darker colours now and um, we want to try and control them a little bit. So I'm just re-wetting the, um, this tail area or the bit above the tail area, I should say. Uh, trying to keep roughly the, um, the shape within the drawing. If it goes a little bit awry, it doesn't matter, but try and wet try and keep the wet area I should say into the area that you're going to drop the paint into otherwise um, it's a bit harder to control so first things first I've got a little bit too much moisture there so I'm just going to take a bit of that out just with some tissue so get a brush and some color so color is going to be the dark brown again so the same colors we used before uh, but this time it's less warm, so I'm going to put some ultramarine in that, into the brown, which will knock down some of the, um, the warmth within the colour. So it's going to be more of a, uh, a, less, a less bright brown, I should say. Okay, now I want the, the darker patch of this brown to be here and I want it to get lighter as it fades up and there's one or two ways I can do this one is I can just um, kind of put the color all over and then just sort of block some off or I could add a bit more water and then tilt the board but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just drop the color in from this end because remember we've wet the whole shape and I'm just going to let it do its own thing okay so I'm not actually going to paint into this area I'm just going to let the paint creep up so watch I'm just going to drop it in at this bottom edge and just tilt the boards away from me okay so the board is tilted so that the the head of the the duck is actually lower than the feet and i'm going to try and just put the color in at this end i'm not going to bring it um all the way through and i'm just going to tip tip it just to get the color to move um, and make it a bit more interesting in those in those shapes. Let's get it running back down that back a bit more. Keep the shape of the bird. What colour is that, Stu? Uh, this was the um, the brown. So the same brown we used in the neck, which was the the burnt umber, burnt burnt raw umber, whatever you've got, with some ultramarine in it. <clears throat> Okay, just some ultramarine blue. Okay, so now we'll leave that to just sort itself out. Again, I might just tickle a brush along that edge just to creep it out a little bit. Okay, now then, wing. So the wings are actually very, very light. So what we're gonna have to do here is be a little bit careful with the amount of paint that we put in the, in the mixture. Otherwise you'll end up with too strong a color. Really what we're talking about here in the wing is mixtures of very, very dilute watercolour. Um, so I'm just going to clean my palette off so it's not quite so filthy. So the first colours I'm going to use will be um, a bit of ultramarine for the base colour. Oops, that's got some blue and black in it. Let's clean that off. I seem to have black all over my palette for some reason. <clears throat> Right, try that again. A bit of ultramarine, plenty of water. So it's very, very dilute. Okay, so I want it to be almost like, um, I don't know what the word is, but let me show you how dilute I want it. So very, very light. Can you see that? Everybody see that? Yeah, so it's almost a, a very, very clear wash. Not very strong is the, um, is the key here. So taking my brush, so I've kind of got a shadow shape in this wing here. I don't know if you can sort of see that there's this darker patch. 
So I'm actually going to start off with that darker patch. And I'm just going to block it in with this sort of bluey, very light blue color. Just painting the shape that I see. I'm not worrying about the feathers, individual feathers. I just want to paint the kind of the shadow that kind of sort of comes all the way down. Kind of block it in as simply as I possibly can without worrying about any, any detail. So it comes down and then we sort of turn the corner then you've got an overlapping, got a very white feather there. So then it sort of comes down and then these sort of come in towards the, the body. And then we've got this next blue sort of funny blue patch that sort of comes up up the wing and then we're into pretty much all blue at the top so this is all on dry paper by the way i'm not i'm not wetting the paper first because i want to control the the um the shapes a little bit so this is just dry paper so more blue coming up that wing and then we've got more blue through here And we take it all the way to the tips of the wing. And I know it goes very dark in places, but we're just ignoring all that for the moment. We're just putting it in as simply, as simple a shapes as we can, we can possibly muster. Do I can't see the top of the wing? Yes, I can't see the top either. Uh, the top of the wing. Can you see it now? No. no. Um, well, the top of the wing goes off the top of the paper anyway. So I haven't got a top of the wing. Can you see the edge of the brush here? No. <coughs> you, can't, you can't see the brush there? No. 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 <laughs> okay, let me move it down a bit. That's better. Can That's you better. see it now? Yeah, no. see it now. Yeah, yeah. Right, so my wing goes out of the paper, all right? So... Uh, yeah, I can't. You can't what, sorry? I couldn't see your brush when you were holding it up the top just now. Yeah. No. no. You still can't see yes. that? No, no, can now, no. Yeah? Okay, okay. now, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I'm now gonna change the color slightly to a burnt sienna. Still very, very washy. Still plenty of water in it. So it's just burnt sienna now as opposed to ultramarine, okay? So the far wing is actually gonna be in a similar fashion. Very, very simple. If the two colors meet, I'm not bothered. If they mix, it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just that I want the far wing to be brown or browny. Sorry, Stuart, can I just ask a question then? Yeah. Um, have you done the, the bluey wash right onto the top of the, the, the front wing? Right onto the front? What, uh, mean, have you done to the top? I can't see the yes. top. Yes. So, that blue all the way up there, is it? Okay. Where my finger is, is all blue, yeah. So yeah, my, my, my wing yeah, I goes out. Finger, the that's the thing. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. I know what to do. Fine. That's all right. So let's continue this brownie colour all the way to the top of this far wing. So this is the the wing that's in the distance. I'm not too worried about the individual feathers. I'm going to leave a few little gaps there, but yeah. Sorry, I yeah. lost connection. Is the wing the first wing you did? Was that a blue? Yep. Yeah. So this one's just ultramarine. What colours that? I've, I've only got a palette of blues and greens. And... So ultramarine blue is probably um, a darkish blue. A dark blue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So use it, but use it with plenty of water in it, though. Okay. Oh, don't don't make very it... weak. A very weak. Very one. very weak with lots of water. Okay. All right. Don't make it too strong. Otherwise, the wing will be too dark. Okay. All right. So let's just soften that off a bit. Right. <clears throat> So really, really simple on those wings. Okay, try not to make them too complicated. Um, it's just the initial wash we're putting on there. And because we've got this last little bit of um, white kind of area down here, I'm going to do that in a similar fashion with blue. Just the ultramarine blue again. Very, very washy. Okay, not too, not too strong. I'm just going to put a little bit of that onto this whiter area. It's going to mix with that brown a bit because it's not dry yet. But it's just to give me some 
light bits of colour on his tail feathers. Just down there. Okay, that's enough. Uh, and then the last thing we can probably do in this little section is put some colour on for the beak, because that's yellow. So we'll give him a yellow beak. So let me just go with some, some like cadmium yellow. Maybe put a tiny, tiny bit of orange in it. It's, it's, it's more on the orangey spectrum than it is on the yellowy spectrum, I think. So just to make it slightly more golden. Tiny bit of orange into, into the yellow if you've got some orange. Or if you don't have orange, then you could just put a teeny, teeny little bit of red in there. Okay, not too much, because obviously we don't want it to be a red beak, but just a tiny bit of colour, just to, just to turn it to the um, warmer side. And then we just drop in a bit of yellow like that. <clears throat> I'm actually going to put some water now around around the whole image so trying to um, not go over the lines too much obviously if you go over the line it doesn't really matter but um, the object here is is that by adding the water to the outside area when we come to put the the background color on hopefully if we've done it well well enough we'll um, avoid too many um, streaks or too many areas that will be dry, allowing us to keep it all very vaporous and atmospheric. That's the plan. So let's just put this water on around the bird. And the main area you wanna concentrate on when doing this is really the edge of the bird. The, the, the body of the background, um, you don't need to be so careful with. It's really the, the, um, the edge of the animal, which is more important for this moisture, just to buy you a bit of time really. And you'll see when I start to put the color on and when you yourselves start to put the color on, what I'm talking about um, is that all this cutting in, which is what this is called, um, takes time and watercolor unfortunately is very time sensitive mm -hmm. so if you if for example you were spending this amount of time say in the head and you've already put some color on down here you can imagine all the edges of that piece of color you've got on down here is starting to dry while you're fiddling around with a bit of the head so um, you want to make sure you've got enough moisture on your painting so that um, that doesn't happen so there we go. So let's just slosh this color on all the way through. And it's all these fiddly bits, particularly around the feathers and the wings and all of those bits and pieces that really can be very troublesome with, um, with watercolor, purely because, as I said, they take time to cut in and to try and keep the shape right and to try and um, make sure that you don't go too far over the line and all the rest of it. So as long as you've, as long as you've put enough moisture on, as we <laughs> saw when we did the bird, you should be buying yourself plenty of time, okay? So that's important. And this is one of the main reasons why most people, they work on stretched watercolor paper, purely because when you're doing this, um, you want your watercolor paper to stay reasonably flat Otherwise, you end up with lots of troughs and valleys. And those troughs and valleys, they make the paint react in a different way. They make it, they make it pull. I seem to have hundreds of hairs all over my painting, which is not brilliant, but never mind. So, colour-wise then. Uh, I think I'm going to go with um, a blue, a dark blue, for my background. And I'm going to use plenty of it. So it's going to be like a thalo -y type blue. Pretty strong. Okay. And I'm going to use it fairly neat. A little bit of moisture in there. But remember, we've already put water on the, on the painting. So let's start off and slosh some of this on. So we'll work. I'm going to work the edge of the bird first, particularly this wing. 
Whoa. Because obviously um, these are the bits that are going to dry out quickest. So we'll get some of this color on pretty, pretty sharpish. And then we can liberally just slosh it all over. <clears throat> Is that phthalo blue? Uh, you can use phthalo blue if you want. Yeah, phthalo blue what will be fine. What did you use? Sorry. Uh, is it, mine's a, um, a, oh, can't remember the name of the word. Uh, it's a, blah, 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 blah. St. Petersburg. It's, oh, um, what color is it? It's called azure blue, if you've got azure oh. blue. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't, then phthalo blue or turquoise or um, even okay. ultramarine with a bit of yellow in it would probably be fine. Okay, okay. thank you. So we'll just do this and then we're going to get this, if I can get this done quick enough, we'll start to swish this around a little bit to get some movement into it. Come down the bird there, down the body, all the way down the leg, a bit more blue into there, maybe even a tiny touch of burnt sienna into it, slosh that on. Don't need to be too careful with this because obviously it's it's background and we want we want some movement going on in there. Bit of a um, bit of brown or something just to get some movement going. Right now I need to cut in under his legs just so he's got some legs and also so that the masking fluid can show up. Slosh slosh slosh. Work that down to the bottom. Okay, now, before that dries, what I'm going to do is take some water in a brush. Okay, so you can use any old brush with water in it. And I'm actually gonna run it. If you've got a, in fact, if you've got a spray bottle, it would be better. Mm -hmm. you cover your bird. If you don't have a spray bottle, you can use a pet or you can use a, a large brush with water. I'm just gonna pump this up. I want this to move around a little bit more. So try not to get the paint or the water into the bird itself. I'm just going to turn that sideways just because I want a bit of movement into this. <clears throat> Let's tilt it a bit more. Because angular paint gives action. So if we can get the, the paint to kind of suggest a direction it will make the bird feel like it's moving in that direction. That's kind of the idea. So if I can get this paint to start to um, feel like it's moving in a particular direction, it will help the, the gesture of the, of the bird. So let's just wash out a little bit more of that. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually just washing the paint out. I'm just adding extra water to the um, to the background colour, which is actually knocking out an amount of the paint, and I'm just going to soak up some of these spots because they're a little bit too thick. Let's do it there. Oops, try not to let that slide off my board. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to tilt it. Just mop up. A little bit of that moisture there. Bring that all right. And now I'm going to spin it 180 back this way to get that paint that was against the wing to actually start to run. Oops, I need to tilt that a little bit flatter. To run kind of this way. Might even <coughs> add a bit more moisture. So just with some water, just going to run some oh, water through this. Yeah. Hello. Oh, yeah, I'm in the middle of an art lesson, look, Savvy, Louis. It'll finish at half past twelve. Okay. You're on. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to do that, but half past, but half past twelve. Yeah. Grandpa, I'll be busy. So I've got our phone call. Jan, your mic's Just get on. Upstairs. <laughs> phone call. I think she can hear me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Back in a minute. Okay. Jan, your mic's on. 
no, it's still kind of me. Okay, um, so we're just getting a little bit of movement with this running this water through the background, just to get um, just to get it kind of giving some more gestural movement into the painting. Let's have a little bit more water up his body there. There we go. Okay, on the background is I just chucked on a little bit of salt on mine, just to break up the background a little bit. Um, it's underwater. And um, yeah, that it wasn't- You put the salt on when the paint is wet then? Yeah. You need to put the salt on when the paint's wet, yes. And then um, you just brush it off. Uh, you don't really need to do anything with it. You just leave it on there and it'll just, it usually just disintegrates. If it hasn't disintegrated, you've probably put it on a bit too late. Um, uh, and then, yeah, once it's dried, you can just brush off any excess if there's a little bit of excess left. But it gives you these sort of, um, uh, these kind of marks. So, um, yeah, it was just a little bit of some extra kind of um, texture in the background was the, um, was the only thing for it. Okay, so let's move on then. Right, so what I'm going to do now is just darken up um, and get some of the shadowy colours on and start to bring the bird out from the background because at the moment it's sort of getting a little bit lost in the background. So let's do that. First things first, I'm going to need to put some shadows on the, um, on the body. Uh, and actually I need to keep it a quick dry because it's still a little bit wet. So let me just do that quickly. So let's put some water now down the underside of um, the head and we need to get his eye in as well because he's going to have no eye. So I'm going to re-wet this um, left hand side of his, his head, which is where I can actually start to bring the, the, um, the shadowier colours uh, down, down his body. So using some of the um, the original green that we used and a bit of yellow but this time stronger so less less water in it much more paint okay so we're using the paint fairly neat now to give us more intensity in our color so bringing this up into the plumage uh, it goes over the top of his head a little bit around the eye <clears throat> down the down the beak just let that creep down the underside of his neck okay now we'll just let that um, if you can mute your mics as well by the way just because I'm getting a bit of noise on the video um, if you don't mind just muting your mics for the moment um, just coming down the neck. Okay, and then we'll get a bit of a bit of brown, a bit of brown, and a bit of purple again. Again, stronger. So I need to re-wet the underside of its its chest area. So coming down there, so dropping in some of this darker brown. Down its chest. And then I'll just work that into the original brown area, just with a damp brush. A little bit of moisture in there, not too much. A bit more color into that area. Oops, I'm just going to mute the mics because there's still quite a lot of noise on there. <clears throat> OK. 
Okay, so coming down, down the body. Bring that up into the wing a little bit more there. Coming down the underside of his belly. Just gonna soften off just with a damp brush, some of this green so it's not so sharp into these brownie colors. Run that along, just a damp brush this is, it's not got any paint in it. It's just so that I can soften off the edges of these colors into what's already there. Um, and stop it being quite so solid. Clean his beak up a little bit, it's a little... Oh, I'll do that after. <clears throat> Run the brush along the belly. Just soften off all of that. And then we'll add some more darker colors down near the legs. So we'll go miss that leg, go behind, around to the tail, and then down into this leg. So that's all gonna be part of the same shadow shape. I'm gonna make this slightly bluer. So some ultramarine into the burnt um, sienna. Just take that color. So it's the ultramarine and burnt, burnt sienna in these two colors. Around the back of that leg, a bit more burnt sienna. So just bring that down his leg. There's actually a shadow. in the feather line here. So we'll just put that in. And then his back here needs to come a bit darker. So we'll do the same little trick, we'll just wet. Actually, before I do that, I'll put a bit more color on his leg. So just the burnt sienna again. <clears throat> just neat burnt sienna. So I'm just gonna put a bit more strength of colour into the leg. Just to make it stand out a bit more. <clears throat> so we'll just soften those edges in just with a damp brush. Now the back. <clears throat> So again, I'm gonna re-wet this shape. So we're sort of doubling the wash up here. So the shape is, um, comes all the way down to the tail, kind of curves over there. And flatten the board out a little bit. So it's not so steep. <clears throat> too much moisture there. So then taking my, um, I'm gonna go with the ultramarine with a tiny bit of the brown in it, not too much, the burnt sienna. Mainly ultramarine in this color. And then I'm gonna drop that like we did in the first place. <clears throat> into his tail and let it start to bleed up into the, the main body of that color. So that we end up with a darker section at this end and then it gets lighter as it creeps up, creeps up the, um, uh, the back. Just a little bit darker there. OK, 
Okay, we'll let that sort itself out for a moment. Just tip it that way a little bit more. Just noticed a fairly <clears throat> strong edge on his head. So I'm just gonna knock that down. Just with a damp, just using a damp brush to rubbing it into the edge, just to knock the edge down a bit. Okay, so I'm gonna give it a quick blast with a hairdryer. Let's put a bit of color on in the eye. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, this is all dry by the way, so I've dried off the whole of the head. And what I'm gonna do now is just wet the little shape of the, um, the, the eye, leaving a little tiny bit of dry paper for the highlight. So I'm not gonna put any paint on that bit, I'm just gonna leave that, leave that dry. Just a bit of water. Then I'm gonna take a bit of the dark brownie color, greeny brownie color, and just drop that into, into that shape that I've just wet, just to start the eye off. It'll probably need to go darker than this, but um, that's enough to get it, to get it started. Okay, and then I will actually peel off some of my masking fluid just to see the effect. Oops, I need to dry that a bit more. Right, so I'm going to knock off just some of this masking fluid. Oh, that's a bit dry, wet there. I shouldn't have done that. Never mind. Just knock those bits out a little bit through his body here. A few spots. Probably could do with leaving this to dry a little bit longer, but never mind. Just to give the idea of, of, of what it's um, the idea of the masking fluid itself. Okay, and then um, probably from here this afternoon, as obviously as I record it, I'll show you about how I detail up a little bit more in the head probably. I'm not gonna put worry about the wings too much. I will go darker in the wings, but I'm not gonna worry about individual feathers so much. I'll probably be using some of that dry brush technique just to give me the in indication of feathers. Um, might even put a little bit of dry brush across his back just to, again, um, give a suggestion of that broken colour um, and then that will probably be it that will be the, um, the the finished piece after that moving back into the eye again I'm just going to add a bit more dark into the pupil just to detail the way up a little bit more and same dark brownie brownie green colours we used originally. Just gonna blot it off a little bit, it's a little bit too wet. Just 
leaving a little, just a tiny little bit of white for the highlight. So now then, I'm going to start to work into the wing a little bit more. So I'm going to put a bit of a very pale wash. Turn my colour out there. <clears throat> so a very pale wash into the into the wing itself, which is the ultramarine and a touch of the burnt sienna in it, but very very watery. So almost no paint at all in it and I'm just going to bring slightly darker slightly stronger I should say a bit more the burnt sienna and the blue together and just bring some of those marks into the wing few bits down here, maybe the front edge of the wing, maybe a bit of tone on there, and then in the wing itself, just a few of those marks. And then a bit darker, so more blue, more burnt sienna. up into this higher area of the wing. Perhaps just let the paint split a little bit. So a bit of dry brush technique, which is where you just drag the, the brush over the surface and allow the surface texture to create some broken marks bit down the back of the wing here a bit darker just underneath and some very very light marks so more water more water back into the into that mixture <clears throat> a bit more blue so bringing some slightly bluer marks into its body Again onto onto dry dry paper, leaving some gaps, obviously for some of the colour under colour to show through. And I'm just going to use some water just to pull those colours together. excess moisture and then the far wing going to be more brown a little bit of ultramarine but mainly brown and then bring some of that back down towards this wing leaving some gaps obviously for the tip of the first wing. Don't want to lose all those nice marks we had earlier. Bring that right down. <clears throat> and then some stronger darks. Maybe using some ultramarine 
Quite feeding a little bit of indigo if you've got it. So a nice, really nice strong, strong dark. And then I'm going to bring that with just a bit of a dry brush into the tail feathers. Just to get a bit more strength of colour in there. A little bit of that under its neck, perhaps around the beak, front of the head. <coughs> Too strong, blot some of that off. Now the shadow under its body needs to come a bit darker. There's plenty of burnt sienna. It's a very warm shadow. Under its leg. Coming up the underside of the body. And it meets up with the uh, the colour's already painted into its plumage. Just dab that off a bit. Coming under this leg. There's a nice shadow in there. A bit darker here. Perhaps darker down this leg a bit. Just break that edge up a touch. <clears throat> then using a smaller brush, going into my nice strong green and yellow. And now with very little water in it, <coughs> going to use this to add some strength to the headline. So we can actually darken up, bring some nice strong dark colours around the head, under the eye, over the top of the eye. Even a few stray hairs there, might be a bit too big. And then it comes back along the top edge. Can even bring a bit dark out of the beak comes along the front of his beak probably should be a bit orangey of that <clears throat> go more burnt sienna with that under the beak top we can add some I'm just going to block this a bit just to break this color up just a little bit of printing with the tissue <coughs> I'm going to take some neat yellow <coughs> so probably out of the tube to make it strong enough just some nice strong yellow 
we can bring into the beak line. a bit stronger. few flecks of white. I'm just using some, if I can find it, some white watercolour. Just put a little highlight in the eye. Perhaps we could brighten up the white area here a bit stronger perhaps the odd bit of white in the wing green with the white just want to touch more tone in the forehead Work that colour down a bit more. A bit of softening around the face. So 
a little bit underneath the cheek, the, the neck. stronger burnt sienna in the legs just to draw a bit more detail in there brown underneath the body. That's the old blue. A bit more in the shadow. a little bit more tone in the wing. <clears throat> more of the blue browns. Just a bit more tone up here in the darker part of the wing. some shape bit of shadow against this wing Shadow down there, across its back. Darker brown marks. A few more dark browns just in the body. Just onto dry paper. this area up a little bit, a bit darker. And there we go, that's it finished for today.